Hello, welcome, welcome to the PTZ Optics pre-show podcast. I'm joined with Tess and Paul from PTZ Optics. Today it is Valentine's Day, so shout out to all the lovers, the Galentines, and the special people out there. Today we're talking about which joystick do you love. So if you're watching now in the comments, throw out the heart, throw out the rose, and let us know what is your favorite joystick. So because it's the special day, I wanted to ask you, Paul and Tess, some Valentine's Day themed questions, mm. mixing it with maybe some questions about our joysticks here that we'll be kind of reviewing and talking about throughout the show. So I wanted to jump in a little broad and throw it out there. What is the most memorable Valentine's Day that you guys have ever had? And Tess, I'll start with you. Okay. It was with my husband. I think it was one of our first Valentine's dates. Um, he took me ice skating in Philadelphia. I forget what it's called, the the ice rink there. Mm -hmm. uh, and we stayed in the hotel that overlooked the water. And it was just really special. We've never done anything like that since. <laughs> it's like really all out. We had a nice fancy dinner, went ice skating and stayed in this hotel. But that was definitely the most memorable one. Oh, it's really nice. What about yeah. you, Paul? You know, the one that comes to mind, since I'm just thinking of this is actually a bad one, was an early date where I was so young. It was like uh, co early college days. I didn't get a reservation. Oh, no. Uh -oh. And I, we just like <laughs> it. went, for, and I was just such a young guy at the time. I was like, we were going like restaurant to restaurant. And of course, they were all booked. And I was like, I'm sorry. Like, obviously, I'm not really well put together. So that, that's the one that comes to mind, just memorable in a bad way. Do you remember where you ended up going? Like, <laughs> like where? nowhere. Like, everywhere was reserved and <laughs> back. So I was just like, Couldn't sorry. Couldn't even go to McDonald's. Yeah, I just, we, I don't think we went anywhere. Is that the first and last date you had with her? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So jumping over to like a camera based tech question, you know, we're talking about, you know, the love of your lives, but we're also, you know, a tech company. We love cameras. We love technology. So I wanted to know, like, what was the first love that you had in terms of either technology or maybe specifically like cameras, the first love of a, a camera that you can remember? For me, it was probably my 35 millimeter um, in high school during my uh, photography class that was oh, my okay. first experience with taking pictures and cameras and what was cool about it is it was all film mm -hmm. so we had a dark room where we would go in and develop the photos and that was just a lot of fun so that was my first connection to cameras um i also love my little it wasn't a blackberry but it was like a slider phone yeah sure so in terms of tech that was like my baby yeah back there when texting was really big mm -hmm. started getting really big so yeah it's fun what about you paul yeah it, it's interesting everyone has a camera in their pocket now so like everyone has a camera um and sometimes a pretty significant connection with that phone or camera that they have i before smartphones at least when i remember smartphones i had Thin, I think it was Casio. It was like a, it was very thin, but it flipped into a camcorder, Ooh. and so it was like a not a phone, but it was like a digital camera slash camcorder that I would run around with in high school. But it was thin and compact, and it was pretty advanced for its time. I know it was seven twenty, um, but I got some really interesting photos. Although I've lost, I think everything <laughs> that I ever got on that. Probably um, for the best, but I really liked it. It was fun. Yeah, the, the jump to 720 was like shocking because mm -hmm. when you're used to 360 and like TV, like nothing as a consumer level, you couldn't get anywhere close to like that HD quality. So I remember when I first got like my iPhone 4, it was like astonishing because it was came with a camera, a functioning you know, digital camera. And it was 2009. I was probably like 12 or 13. And I was just shocked by what you could do with a, a phone camera than all the other things you could do with it as well. But it kind of blew my mind at the time. I'm like, wow, this it started the spark of, you know, digital photography, really, I think, for a lot of people. So jumping back into more Valentine's Day, I want to know if you have like a special story or like a moment where you really remember making someone feel special, someone, maybe a Galentine's Day, we can kind of shift gears for you, Tess. And do you remember having like a, a great Galentine's? You recently had a Galentine's, didn't you? I recently had a Galentine's, but this weekend we went to Dueling Pianos Ooh. at the Townhouse of Media. But what made it special is it was my girlfriend Liza's birthday. Mm -hmm. So we tipped them and had them play happy birthday to her. And Aww. she was absolutely mortified because <laughs> it was like a room full of like giddy girls. But it was so much fun. Mm. So that was special. That's really sweet. Yeah. You ever had a, a Broentine date, Paul? You ever? 
That's a good question. I feel <laughs> like all the, the men that I was hanging out with, they either had girlfriends or they didn't. Yeah. And yeah. so the guys that didn't were like, you know, against Valentine's Day for that reason. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, so if I didn't have a girlfriend, I think I was just pretending that Valentine's Day wasn't happening. Yeah, I, that is a great question, though. Like, I'm curious what you guys are overall thoughts of Valentine's Day. A lot of people are very negative about Valentine's Day. It's like a manufactured holiday to some it people. Is, but... And they feel like angry that they're forced to buy things and do things on the 14th. I think it's great. You know, it's awesome that like we can pick one day and it's all about love and positivity and, you know, showing kindness to people. Yeah. It's awesome. Why would you look at it as a bad thing? I get it. It's all about making money. But you guys have overall thoughts or opinions on Valentine's Day? I like that it's extended beyond just significant other. Like, it's fun to celebrate with your kids. Like, I know you recently had a dance with your kids. How was yeah. it, by the way? That was one of the most fun things. Uh, we had a Valentine's Day dance last weekend. You did? And uh, that our school had never had that before because it really depends on the the parents setting stuff up like mm -hmm. that. The PTO, parent tour, t parent teacher organization. So they put together a Valentine's Day dance that was wonderful. It was fun. The girls yeah. had fun. The everything. girls especially had a lot of fun. Girls, uh, little girls, especially because I have a four-year-old little girl and a six-year-old. And they were just like, what dress are you going to wear? You know, they were freaking out. They were Aww, loving it. That's, that's so, so cute. Fun. When you talk about love, I always think of like compatibility, right? And our joysticks are compatible with three different joysticks we have here, compatible with all of our PTZ Optics cameras. So I'm, I'm curious, like when you're picking a joystick out of the three that we have here in front of us, how do we find that compatibility? Is there like a certain camera that goes well with one joystick or really could you mix and match? I'll start out with you, Paul. That's a good question. Um, these joysticks are designed in general for PTZ Optics cameras. So there are some buttons on these joysticks that were really designed for controls that are only available in PTZ Optics. Mm -hmm. uh, but that being said, it's very much standards based. So from a serial perspective, Sony originally wrote Sony Visca mm -hmm. and almost everyone standardized on that except for Panasonic and I think Vadio are just some two outliers there. Um, so in general, most cameras will work under the Sony protocol, almost like 80%, mm -hmm. maybe 90%. Um, then there's uh, security cameras that are in a whole other world, but they use Pelco and they use OnVIF, and which are also supported uh, in, some of, in some of these joysticks. So they very much are built around standards, mm -hmm. meaning most cameras will work with them, uh, but our engineers have added some extra things like custom buttons for auto tracking mm -hmm. that they've actually built in a way that are, can be customized for almost any camera. So they, they're really wide open to work with any model. Uh, but out of the box, like the manual, the setup guide is really designed for PTZ Optics cameras. Okay. And would you say that all three joysticks, they work with our Move SE, our Move 4K, and the Link 4K cameras? For sure. Okay. So all three cameras will work with any of the joysticks that you see here today. So talking about technology and love, I personally met my fiance in person, but we didn't really connect until later on because of Facebook. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg, for helping <laughs> and suggesting her as a friend. And now... Here we are seven years later. It's pretty crazy. So I'm curious, wow. what, how have you seen technology? You guys are both coming up in an age where technology was booming when you guys met each other's partners, but you didn't really meet through technology. So how do you see love changing because of technology? I'll start with you, Tess. Well, it definitely has changed the game. Um, I don't know if it's narrowed the playing field or opened the playing field wider. Mm -hmm. I would say it opened it because you get to meet people that you would have never otherwise met in person before. Um, I kind of skipped the Tinder and the app dating age, and so did you, Paul. Um, but it happened very quickly after we found our partners. And um, it's just interesting. I think it's definitely opened up a lot of potential for meeting new people, I'd say. Mm -hmm. do you Would have, you agree? Yeah, definitely. Do you have friends that like have met partners? Oh, yeah. Through Most online? of my friends have met their partners. Well, about half of them, I'd say, have met their partners throughout through have, online dating. Have you apps. noticed like a trend? Is it like mainly Tinder? Is it mainly like a certain Bumble is pretty popular. Bumble seems yeah, to be the majority. Yeah, especially with my girlfriends. They like Bumble because they get to pick um, who it's they want to. It's all up to them. Yeah, they them. have the power, truly. <laughs> Which is interesting. What about you, Paul? How do you see like love and technology? Well, it's funny. My wife and I met in person, um, but then she reached out to me on Facebook years later. Oh. So we have a similar story there. Um, and I'm like, thank you for Facebook, because it was like a Facebook message where she was like, hey, you know, I know we we dated like years 
before and like she lived in the other side of the country in Missouri and she was like do you like want to hang out again and it's like yes and now we're married for 10 years wow. um 11 almost but um i what i think's happening so you, the, the playing field is widened right so lots more dates but i think people's expectations are the same and they think they're going to fall in love every time yeah. and it's like if it's that wide and everybody's jumping around so much you're not going to fall in love with every person that you swipe with. That's true. So I think the uh, people are, from what I've been talking to people, they actually get a little bit upset. Like, it's so hard. It's so hard. It's like, it's actually easier. I believe in love at first sight, personally. Mm -hmm. And so like, it's like, okay, well, you're going to have to they put yourself out there a hundred times. If this is the game everyone's playing, one of these times is going to be love and then you're good. But, um, you know, everyone's just kind of swiping so much. And I feel like, if it's not perfect, if it's not love at first sight, people are just like, I'm just one swipe away from my next match. And it gets people to jump around a lot more. Everyone's dating a lot more. Yeah, yeah maybe that's definitely. why it's a little bit more surface level at first. I feel like people are a lot more choosy now because you can immediately choose and say no before you even if get to heal a, a single word. Ten in every aspect. Yeah, so there's a lot of people who aren't giving people a chance because they just think they know them or they have this preconceived notion of yeah. who they are already. So, Paul, you mentioned love at first sight. So I feel like I have to ask more about that as well. So I know the biggest argument between love at first sight is the difference between like true love, like a romantic love that you have for a partner versus just like a physical attraction. So how would you say there is a difference between the two, whether you see someone and you're immediately attracted to them because of their appearance or is it really, you know, a deeper connection? Is it really love at first sight? That's interesting. I do think that those that those two things that you mentioned, like the appearance and the chemical reaction yeah. in your body, right? The physical attraction to someone, those two things uh, can be intertwined. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, if you have a, con a, a surface level connection with someone, it's going to make you take that step and see, you know, and so I think that's very common for everyone um, to be like physically attracted to someone first and then learn whether or not you're like, personality types work yeah i don't know i'll just give you my example here but my wife told me when she first saw me she said do i know you <laughs> and she was like where do i know you from is it from school is it from this is it from that and i sort of felt the same way like do i know you like we like we were like weird like we thought we knew each other <gasps> and she legit was like where do i know you from and so that's how we knew wow i never knew that about you that's so sweet <laughs> That is really sweet. I feel like kind of a similar kind of connection, but there's a lot of people that are very successful, loving relationships who don't feel like that. Yeah. So it is hard to kind of just say that that's the case when there's a lot of working, loving relationships out there. So it is kind of like we all find our different ways and, and find love in different ways. So I'm curious, you know, if, if there's a certain way you like spending Valentine's Day. We heard from Mike, our lovely producer in the back there. He likes to not celebrate it on the day maybe the weekend before or after because you kind of get rid of the crowd the messiness of it all but Tess do you have like a certain way you like it is pajamas in bed and pizza kind of night is that is that what you think <laughs> I'm the same way as Mike I like to celebrate it on a non busier night a night that's easier to get a sitter for the kids mm -hmm. um, but I'm all about Valentine's Day bring on the chocolate bring on a nice dinner you know holding hands mm -hmm. uh, the whole shebang oh I love that what about you Paul um, I'm starting to shift to um, get my kids involved. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm getting my kids involved, you know, they're right now they're probably giving their Valentines to each other in class. Mm -hmm. And so they're like having this and it's for the first time, I think, for them. I don't even know if they did it the past couple of years because um, like you couldn't give candy to other kids right. or whatever the past couple of years. So I'm riding the train of like the hype for my kids. So I'm like, all right, it's Valentine's Day. Like pack your bags, pack your Valentines. Let's go when we get home. I'm going to give my wife her present in front of my kids so that they can see Aww. the gesture and be that's part nice. of it. Yeah. So I'm doing it all on the day. Oh, that's really nice. I like that. Nice. So your kids still bring the Valentine's. Do they give them out to like everyone in class or yeah. is it like they pick and choose who they want to give it to? My, my oldest daughter did something special for one, oh, uh, okay. one boy. Wow. Oh, I'm surprised. But it wasn't for love. She That's actually it. was like, this is this boy's been bothering her. So she's like, <laughs> she, she actually thinks that this is going to like solve some issues with them. That is wow. a great thought. That's a very adult <laughs> way of approaching that. <laughs> like shower them with love, you know? Yeah. I, like that. Of love. I really like that. That's great. 
So I wanted to do a little fun game. And I wanted you guys, since it's Valentine's, and we're talking about creating Valentine's, I wanted you guys to write a little love poem. A love poem. And instead of to anyone in particular, I want to maybe a little love poem to one of our joysticks here now. Oh, boy. The HC Joy, the PT Joy, or our Super Joy in front of Paul over there. So, Tess, is there a certain joystick you would like to write a poem to? I would pick the HC Joy. Okay. And Paul, what about you? Um, I will pick the Super Joy. Okay. All righty. Let's, let's start to brainstorm a little bit. We'll get you guys going, Wait, thinking about a poem here. here. And while you guys are working on that, I'm going to throw it to you guys in the chat. Let us know what is your favorite joystick. Maybe there is one of these three joysticks that you love, that you want to have. You know, throw a rose in the chat. Let us know which joystick you like, whether it's the PT Joy G4 or the HC Joy G4 or the Super Joy. That is Paul's writing a poem about. And remind me, which one are you doing the poem about, Tess? The HC Joy. HC Joy. Okay, great. So another question I wanted to ask, and I want to distract you, so I'll, I'll kind of a rant here on my own while you guys are writing your poem. And I want to know as well from the chat, is there like a romantic song or a romantic movie that you love or you think of when you think of Valentine's Wise Day. Wise men say. Why is that? Only fools rush in. I guess that makes sense. It's a very lovely I romantic song. Help my 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 okay, that's a great choice. Yeah, I love that. All righty. So they're wrapping it up. I hope everybody's having a great Valentine's Day. I don't have any plans for tonight. I'm going to make my fiance some pasta, probably. That's So you're doing pasta, too. We're doing ravioli. I think so. Yeah, I think so. That seems to be a lovely what romantic way. What do you cook way. it with your home chef? Oh. Um, I, I'm actually, I'm, you know, th this is a, a team, a team sport here. Love is love goes two ways. So I've got <laughs> my stuff and my wife is going to handle figuring out what we're doing from a dinner perspective. Oh, OK. So, it, it, you know, the man has to take care of a lot of the stuff like the gift, I think, is important mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But. I don't actually know what the dinner plans are. Has that gift changed for you over time? You guys are together for a decade now. Like, yeah. has it started out expensive? Has it gotten more expensive over time? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, like nicer jewelry <laughs> over the years. I, I, I we, I honestly, I think the anniversary is more important than Valentine's. Sure. So, like, I, that's how I feel about it. So, like, Valentine's to me is a little bit of a chocolates and you know, not a gag gift, but like nothing crazy. And then yeah. at, out the anniversaries are the important ones. To me. Yeah, they're simple and sweet. I like that. That makes sense. What about for you, Tess? How's your gifting changed over the years? We don't really do Valentine's gifts. I might get flowers and a card or something like that mm -hmm. or chocolate, but um, we are saving money, so we just don't spend too much on Valentine's gifts. Sure, sure. Do you guys do gifts? I know you you are doing gifts. We were talking about this. Earlier. Yeah, it's always a challenge, right? I, it's like flowers are tough because they die so quickly, right? So I always want to, I've over the past couple of years, I've shifted over to houseplants, succulents, things that like will hopefully last longer than, you know, two weeks, like a dozen roses would. They die so quickly. Definitely chocolates. I think that's another big question I have for you guys is dark chocolate, milk chocolate, or white chocolate. <laughs> what are you going to go with, Paul? Definitely dark. Dark chocolate every time? Love no. dark chocolate. You're also dark? Mm -hmm. Interesting. I, that's not my preferred. That's probably number three for me, honestly. I prefer milk chocolate, but I, I think my favorite is like white chocolate. I love white chocolate. White chocolate. Yeah, really? and that's like a crazy thing for a lot of people, but I love like the simplicity. I love the taste of vanilla, which is basically all that white chocolate I tastes like. I get that for my son. He loves vanilla. Yeah, I love it. And they, there's like Lindor white ch chocolate, the chocolate truffles. Oh, those things are like amazing. So good. Uh, we had like kind of a mini snow day yesterday, so I got to, uh, my fiance was off of work, so that was really nice. We got to spend some time uh, together at home, and that was kind of our Valentine's uh, in a way. All right, Tess, we have a little bit more time here. How's your poem coming? You almost there? I only need one word left. You're doing a haiku, or are you doing something specific? I'm doing a rhyme. Oh, okay. All right, Paul, are you almost there? Are you almost ready to yeah, present? Yeah, I just got a couple lines here. Almost ready um, to, to present you to ready the class for your uh, Valentine. Right. Yeah, I think we're ready. All right, I got buttons glowing, lights aflare, in studios, both here and there, capturing moments frame by frame in the director's skillful game. Wow, that was great. Great beautiful. job. I loved that. That was a beautiful love poem for okay. our super joy. Mine's only just a few sentences because we didn't have a lot of time there. <laughs> Alberto says, super joy. Auto triggers help get the stage, get around the stage quickly. Uh, thank you for voting. Alberta. Thank you. Yes. 
The HC Joy is my favorite toy. It helps me control my cameras like I control my boy. (laughs) The RS-232 makes it easy to control. Daisy chain my cameras and cue my B-roll. Oh, wow, I love that. Good. That's great. There you go. That's that it. was amazing. Great job, guys. That was fun. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for torturing yourselves by writing a love poem. <laughs> Is there like a Valentine's gift that you got that you'll never forget? What's the best Valentine's Day gift you've ever been given? I don't even remember. I can't even think of Valentine's gifts. I did get a diamond necklace from Steve. Wow. Once, and that was pretty special. And you still have that. I didn't lose that, Yes, right? I still have that. Okay. Like, I lost my engagement ring. I did not lose <laughs> the diamond necklace. I just don't wear it often because yeah. it's nice. Sure. Yeah. I, it, you know, the Valentine's Day doesn't stink. Just ring in my bell and my memory. I All the anniversaries I can remember, but not Valentine's Day. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. I mean, it's not like a huge day of gift giving. I feel like the longer I've been in a relationship, the smaller the gift giving has gotten. It's more gestures or like candy yes. or something. Yes. How do you guys feel about the like book of coupons or like the... I've done that for you've Steve. done that. OK. Yeah. <laughs> coupons. You, you know what I'm talking about, Paul? Like no, the, I actually don't. like it's like a coupon book. I mean, how would you describe this test? It's like so you you give your partner coupons. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like one free get out of jail free card, like end oh. the fight right now like, or like you get to control the remote or I give you a back. Massage. I'll do the dishes. Oh, like, yeah, those it's kinds fun. of things. Yeah, I've done that before when we were extra broke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they're personal gifts. They're like truly gifts of, of gesture, right? Things that you could do to yeah. offer someone in a time of need. So what do you do when you are in a relationship? I know for you guys, it's been a long time. But do you remember what Valentine's Day was like when you didn't have anyone or when treat you were yourself? Alone? Yeah. So how do you treat yourself on a day like this? Get Thai food. Hang out with the gals. It's mostly about food. Feeding yourself. Or go get a massage or get your nails done. Okay. Manny Petty. Yeah. It's definitely about self-love if you're single, I think. Or it can be like moping in your sorrows. (laughs) Drinking. Or maybe you're happy and content and it's just like any other day. Yeah. Yeah. I think ignorance is bliss on that one for me. Where it's just like, okay, I can just stick that right out of my mind if I'm, you know, in the college, I wasn't really lucky with the ladies. So I was just like, forget about this day. Yeah, right. (laughs) (laughs) I want to go back to joysticks for a second and ask, how do you like see the future of joystick control? Where do you think we go from here? You know, do we mix switchers with joysticks? Mm -hmm. Do they all become one? Will we have joysticks still be their own thing and switchers and switcher controls is is separate? Where do you see us moving towards with joystick control? In the same way that there's still TriCasters and Mm -hmm. physical switchers, I think joysticks will stick around too just because people like that hardware component. Definitely. Yeah. I'll say uh, stick around for the NAB show and we'll find out. Where the controls are. I think we're going to see things from from our company, things from other companies. I think NAB is what two months less than two months away, yeah. so that's going to be a uh, I think a big big change. Oh, we lost oh no, our we love. Lost our love sign. We lost our beautiful love sign. Right. No, <laughs> we'll have to bring it back up when the show starts. So, what is like the most romantic place that you guys have ever visited? Whether a foreign country, whether another city in the country, whether it was just a local spot in downtown, a restaurant that you guys might love. What do you think of when you think of romantic? While you're thinking of that, I I got to, <laughs> with my mom and my aunt, eat in the Eiffel Tower. So oh, not romantic wow. in terms of who I was with, but it was romantic in terms of the setting. There was three wow. engagements when I went to, to eat there. Three separate people and couples all got engaged in the Eiffel Tower that really? night. Really? Yes. Oh, my God. So I felt very bad for the third person who was probably just waiting there like, oh, my God, like two <laughs> people have already gone. Like my moment's <laughs> ruined. Cool. Wow, I think that makes it better. Yeah, in a way, yeah. Our honeymoon in Mexico was pretty romantic. Yeah. Um, But I can't think of, I can remember one hotel we stayed in that I thought was really romantic. It was Mm -hmm. in Lancaster, PA. Wow. Of all places. But we had this corner room with windows and we were really high up and you could just open it both sides. I don't know. It was just really. Overlooking the city. Yeah, it had a really nice bathroom, like a Mm. bubbly tub and everything. It was really nice. Mm, That's really nice. What about you, Paul? Actually, one of my first dates with my wife was in Spain. Wow. And it was Cadiz, <laughs> Spain. And we were sitting outside drinking wine, having tapas. And it was this little like nook of, a, of an alley across from a church. 
And we're just sitting there talking and whatever. And then these humongous church doors open and people had just got married and they were like throwing flowers in the sky wow. going through right past us. And we were just like, whoa. That yeah, was a sign. Yeah, yeah definitely. Maybe it was. Serendipitous. That's what uh, my fiance always says. You know, moments like that, serendipitous. It's like this sign that's telling you something is grander and larger than yeah. it is. So I think a great way to kind of wrap this up is to reach out to our audience and what is like a piece of advice or a message that you want to leave our ptz optics audience whether it's about our joysticks whether it's about love and valentine's day how do you guys want to wrap this up and, and send love to all our great listeners and followers of ptz optics that's a great question i guess when it comes to the joysticks let them meet you where you are Oh, so whether you're looking for something super simple that will plug directly into your camera, if you're at the beginning stages or just liking it simple, you've got volunteers you're working with, something like that, the HD joy would be perfect. But once you get into an IP workflow, that's when you want to start looking at the PT joystick and the super joy. So let them meet you where they are. I think that's the message I would leave you with. I love that. What about you, Paul? I would say, you know, show your joysticks some love by updating the firmware. Oh, uh, perfect. Don't know, forget about the firmware. Um, give it uh, a static IP address, potentially. You know, go in there, set the set the password so no one <laughs> texts wow. you a lovely joystick. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but there's some things you can do to, to, to really give your joystick some love. Um, you know, the cameras that it's connected to. Um, set the presets and adjust the speed levels to your liking so that, you know, the more you do to customize it, you know, the love that you give will be the uh, the love that you get back in your production value. Oh, that was great, guys. That was so great. You guys just pulled that out of nowhere. I'm <laughs> I very know. impressed. We can think on the spot. You well, put us on the spot. Thank you for watching the pre-show for PTZ Optics. Stick around because we're going to talk about which joystick do you love. And remember, throw those roses down in the comments. We'll see you soon. Hello, Hi. welcome to PTZ Optics Live. Today we're talking about all of our pan tilt zoom joysticks today. We're laying it on a little thick because it's Valentine's Day. So we're asking, which joystick do you love? <laughs> or which do you think that you would love if you own them? So you could still participate even if you don't own one. And we've got this rose here at the end of the show. We want to know which joystick gets the final rose. <laughs> so you guys are going to help us vote throughout the show. So keep that in mind as we continue on. Awesome. So we're going to start with a serial joystick, which is probably the technology that's been around the longest. Even before networking, we had serial. It's also the most affordable entry-level joystick. And it's definitely a throwback from a nostalgia perspective. Anyone in the pro AV industry, in the broadcast industry knows about serial connections and serial cameras. So let's take a look at the Huddle Cam HC Joy G4. That stands for the fourth generation of this product. They've made some huge improvements to this product over the years. I don't even want to look back at HC Joy G1 because that would be crazy. But Mike is going to really lay it on thick with the stingers. That stinger didn't go anywhere. <laughs> right <back> <laughs> <laughs> Here's, all right, he's gonna try again. Here we go. No, 
<laughs> we don't want to see Paul. No, it's supposed right, to cut to. All right, prepare the charm. And. Okay, we did it. Beautiful. There we go. Okay. So this is the HC Joy G4. This joystick now has, I think it is, is it six or is it eight hot camera key buttons there? Seven. Seven. Okay, so we've got seven quick connect buttons there. Um, and Tess is operating it here. This is a direct connection from the joystick to the camera. Uh, the nice thing about that is there's no network needed. And it's very affordable, very easy. And you can set up your cameras with a daisy chain. Um, so I wanted to kind of show off what a daisy chain is and why it's so easy for people to set up, especially if you are just setting up on the go, on the fly, like two or three cameras at a production. And I also kind of, um, the nice thing I like about this is that you can go from one camera to the next. So if you click camera two on that joystick, we can now start controlling camera two. Um, it's really that easy. Um, yeah, no, that one right there was moving test. Oh, it was? Yeah. So you, yeah, it's not, it's the one, it's the camera that's my main camera over there. Yeah, it's on the wall here. You can't see it all. So I wanted to kind of talk about the cables here to show what these are. These, these are cables that we should all know about. This is the DB9. Okay. So this is called a DB9. Right there, there's nine pins. And then this is called an eight pin mini DIN. So DB9 is this one. This It's got nine here. And the eight pin mini DIN. So the DB9 connects to the joystick. And the eight pin mini DIN connects to the camera. From the first, that's how you get to from the first, uh, to the first camera. To the second camera, you can daisy chain eight pin mini DIN out of the first camera and to the second camera. So I, I actually have a diagram uh, that I'm screen sharing that I want to show this to as well, because that really shows how this is set up here. And this is also showing the joystick in all its many flavors. It can actually control cameras with RS-232. It can control with RS-422 or RS-485. Um, so most PTZ optics cameras and most PTZ cameras in general have both in and out ports. And those in and out ports allow you to go in and out. <laughs> uh, so you can go out and then back into the next camera and they daisy chain to and fro. Um, looks like Tim has two controllers. One is the HC Joy G3. So the HC Joy G3 was a, re a really big upgrade from G2. I, I kind of remember each of these. Uh, pretty well. The big difference with this one is the softer buttons. Um, just a different tactile feel. Um, other than that, uh, I'm trying to think there was a, the new knobs are on there now, which was a big deal uh, for iris, shutter speed, focus, um, things like that to dial in the speeds. So that is the serial joystick. And if you want to control multiple cameras, you essentially just daisy chain them together uh, because each camera does not have to be on the network. So great for locations where you may not have a strong network, locations where you may not have a network at all, no Wi-Fi entirely. You could still use the joystick. Yeah, here. and there's scenarios where if you imagine you've got four or five cameras, right? And you've got one, two, three, four, five in a row. It's easier to do one long daisy chain from one to the next than it would be to run a single home run to each. Okay. Now, in the world where we're powering a lot of these cameras over Ethernet anyway, mm -hmm. that's where people start to think, huh, maybe I should go with an IP joystick. Because I'm using Ethernet already to power the cameras. I might as well control them with that same cable. And man, I have a picture of this. I used to live stream a concert uh, every, every summer because... Uh, Worked at PTZ Optics. I've done Tess it with you. Did it with me a couple of times. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, but in those days, I would run an SDI cable for video. I would run Ethernet just for power over Ethernet, but not control. And I would run an RS-232 cable. And it was just a lot of cables for yeah. every camera. Um, and now with one single Ethernet cable, that's a big move and a big trend in the industry. So let's look at the PT Joy G4 then. Let's get into IP. 
right? So if you're upgrading and you want to use more IP control, that's the perfect device for you moving to the PT Joy G4. So this right. is the fourth generation here. Some pretty nice updates here. Besides just IP control, this joystick can do serial control as well. So it lives in this nice middle ground. I definitely know uh, customers who use this joystick with serial control. Wow. Just not at the same time. Yes, just not at the same time. So it, basically, if you hold down the button on the joystick, it will switch from serial to IP. And when you do that, now you can control a serial camera using the 8-pin mini to output. Uh, right now, Tess is using the IP connection to a camera right there on the desk. So this joystick also features knobs for adjusting the iris, the shutter speed, the gain, the color, things of that nature. Um, the the speeds at which the camera move is important here, right? So the, you can control the speed of pan, tilt, zoom, and then the speed with, with between presets, along with easy access for the on-screen display menu, mm -hmm. which is important. You know, I, I know customers who have camera a thousand feet away, you know, and they don't want to go out there with a remote or something. You want to have a controller that you can access everything from remotely. Uh, so IP really extends the range at which you can start controlling cameras. I'm looking at the chat here. Timothy says, when we daisy chain, does each camera need to be powered on? Yes, it still will need a power supply because daisy chain doesn't, uh, RS-232 doesn't power the cameras. Yes. And uh, we just uh, posted a video, John and I were working on, I think two weeks ago, where we showed this. Essentially, when you daisy chain, you go in one side, out the other. Um, in fact, let me take this camera that's in front of me and hold it up. I'll hold it up to my super, uh, to my Studio Pro here that's in front of me so we can really look at it nicely and tightly here. Um, the back of this camera has, you can see, an in and an out port, RS-232. So that those are those 8-pin mini dins. You go in one side, out the other. That's for serial. And then, of course, that LAN port there, that's what's used for IP control. Um, this is the PTZ Optics Move SE. And you'll notice there is a IR receiver in the front here and in the back. So we've made it a lot easier for controlling uh, different options for controlling cameras. Let's plug this back in because it's part of my SuperJoy demo. But we're going to go from the Serial Joy to the PT Joy to the SuperJoy. Yes, James is saying, Ron, I highly recommend the SuperJoy. I'm sure they'll be getting to that soon. And here we are. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, one of the questions is, you know, when do you go from serial to IP, and then at what point do you go from a PT Joy to a Super Joy? Um, and I'm happy to answer that question. Uh, serial again is super popular, super fun. Everyone who uses it, it's great for you if you're on a budget. So I definitely see, like, I'll give you an example of the Serial Joy that I think would be well, good. Let's say you've got two or three Move SEs, low budget, small podcast, small cooking show in a in a in a kitchen or something, uh, quickly connect them, each one of them, daisy chain them, small contained area. Mm -hmm. If you are in a larger church or a bigger space, cabling from one to the next doesn't make sense. You're going to permanently install these. You're going to power them over Ethernet. You want access to the web interface anyway. Um, then you start going into IP. That makes sense. Timothy's asking another question here. So big question I have is how do we get a less robotic effect with joystick movement? Now, he has the HD Joy G3, so there might be some differences there in the G4. Well, you know, the serial connections, by the way, are very low latency. So the joystick itself is sending commands very quickly to the joystick. There's no network in between, right? There's nothing point to point in between the joystick and the camera. So the latency is incredibly low. If you are trying to make it look more like a camera operator, then what you're going to want is you're going to want to either play with the, basically the speed options, the pan, tilt, and zoom options. Uh, also, with the serial joystick, you also have the ability, there's two other options here, is if you're using presets, right, PTZ camera presets, those can often look robotic. I think that might be what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. 
There's a setting on PTZ Optics G2 cameras and the new ones where it's called motion sync. And it synchronizes the motion between the pan tilt zoom position here and the pan tilt zoom position here so that instead of, and if you have an older G2, you might experience this, uh, panning, tilting, and then zooming, it actually triangulates the two positions and goes in between all of that and goes directly. It looks very nice. It tries to finish your preset, panning, tilting, and zooming all at the same time. It takes some, actually, trigonometry to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Our engineers know trig. <laughs> Okay. Moving on to the Super Joy. All right, the Super Joy. Now, before we get to the Super Joy, though, I do want to mention that the PT Joy G4 and the Super Joy both got a huge firmware update recently. And one of the big things with the Super Joy was that it has these custom buttons. The buttons can be customized to do anything you want. They could start streaming, they could start recording, they could start. Um, tracking, auto tracking, which is what I have this button set to right now. Um, and the PT Joy never had that. In fact, the Super Joy really has a super preset. <laughs> I was going to say super cool. No, I'm saying super too many times. All right. The Super Joy has a very effective feature. There you go. Which is called a super preset. And it allows you to click one button and send PTC preset commands to up to, I think it's seven cameras at the same time. I don't know. Okay. Roughly five, you know, between five or seven, might even be eight. Um, and what that allows you to do is switch scenes very quickly. So let's say, you know, you get to church on Sunday and the cameras were left and who knows where, right? The volunteers left them. Click one button, it sends a command to all of your cameras to reset and be ready to go. You can set another super preset to have everyone go to the baptism area or everyone go to the left stage or everyone go to the end of a football field if you're doing sports. Um, so super presets are very effective for moving multiple cameras around with your joystick. That was only available on the Super Joy. We now have unlocked that capability into the PT Joy G4 using the button on the joystick. So the joystick button now has a feature for uh, doing custom presets and custom commands. So the Super Joy is these products that PTZ Optics manufactures. We continue to improve them over time. Uh, at every other show that we're doing is about firmware, and the cameras get new firmware, the joysticks get new firmware. In fact, the new PTZ Optics Move 4K firmware has a new feature called PTZ Speed Sync. I believe that's what it's called, and that improves the smoothness of the cameras and how they respond to the joysticks. Ron Bright says, resist moving cameras live, especially over large distances. Switch to another scene, move the camera, and then come back to PTZ. And that is great advice. It really is. That, if you're going to be moving the camera live, then there's a couple of things that you can do. One is you might want to try auto-tracking. And we, I'm happy to do an auto tracking demo. It, only if someone in the chat says they want to see it. Okay, let us know. Because <laughs> we know that our, you know, we don't want to do it if we don't have to because <laughs> we don't have to. But if we, if someone wants to see an auto tracking demo, we will do it. Um, I think it's very smooth the movement. And one of the things we're going to talk about today is the ability to set pan tilt limits, not just for auto tracking, but for all types of camera operation. So I'll give you an example. That's a pretty simple one. I'll give you two examples. One is if uh, we have a lot of high schools and colleges that have basketball stadium courts and the movement in basketball is fast. You're going back and forth and back and forth. And I really tried hard to spread the word about pan tilt limits in scenarios like this because it's very, if you're moving that fast back and forth, it's very easy to overshoot and you never really need the camera to be off court, most likely. So if you set a pan tilt limit to the left and right, you can Pull that camera as fast as you need to, and it will stop right at the limit. Um, that's also, for example, too, that's the same thing you can do if you are someone on stage and you're tracking someone on stage. Also, a lot of times you don't need to go up very high. So I always suggest setting a tilt limit. You know, you don't need to see the ceiling. You don't need to see above most people's heads in a lot of scenarios. So you can set a tilt limit at the top there. And those limits allow you to have a little bit more freedom and a little bit more confidence as you're panning and tilting around those spaces. 
Yeah, I could see that perfectly for a church, right? You know, there's a lot of spaces you might not want to show. Maybe you don't even want to show the congregation or the audience. And you could easily set those limits so you know exactly where to stop that camera movement. So it works really for anyone and out there who wants to, you know, set certain guidelines on exactly what your camera can see and what it can't. They want to I, see. Oh, they want to see the auto track. All right. They want to see it. All right. So let's show the auto tracking. Um, I've already set pan tilt limits. So this will work. Okay. Where'd you set the limits to? Like the side um, of the. In studio? fact, you know what, Mike? I would actually like to show this off um, via the web interface, if that's okay with you, because um, I want to show how easy it is to control this in the uh, pan tilt area here. So one thing I'll just show you, if I go over to the left here, it's not going to go any further to the left over here. And if I go to the right, it will not go any further right than that. Okay, Tess? So I've already set two pan tilt limits. Now, when I go to uh, auto tracking, I want to have multi-target -tar select on. And what that does is that is going to show, uh, it's going to start tracking and it's going to go ahead and Detached to test here. Now, so test walk forward a little and go all the way over, I guess. Um, okay, this is fine. Um, the reason why I wanted to show that is because it won't go any further left. You have to keep going a little bit, I think. But essentially, and maybe I set this, the, the limits poorly, but it won't go any further than that. Um, now, the other thing I want to show is that we have the ability to zoom in the auto tracking. John's in the background. There we go. And essentially what that's doing is it is allowing us to zoom in the auto track so that you can get different framing for your auto tracking. To me, and I'm just trying to be completely honest, that looks smooth to me. I'm not seeing it. Doesn't look very robotic to me. Oh no, they're saying to move fast. Challenge it, says Timothy. Faster test. All right, let's give you a little bit more uh, space to run and really go. Now, here's the other thing I want to show though, as well, since we're doing this, is um, there's a new auto framing feature. So if we go to auto framing and I'm going to go ahead and start auto framing and turn auto tracking off. Now what it's going to do is it's going to follow both of them. So if they both move left and right, it'll zoom out. If they move close together, it will zoom in on both of them. How about that? This is my favorite feature. I'm going to get up and do it with you guys. This is, this is my absolute favorite new feature of this camera. So that, that is my favorite feature of these cameras. I mean, I'm thinking plays, dances, anytime there's any amount of people on the stage. Right. I don't think there's a limit to how many people you can have. No, there isn't. Perfect for dance recitals, like you said. There's so many dance studios all across the country. You want to keep every little girl, boy in frame. You know, they're constantly running around like crazy oh, yeah. in those dance studios. So. We have got to find a dance studio. I was thinking like jujitsu, like yeah. wrestling. Got that yeah. right there. Yeah. Like, let's think about that, guys, and really go out and find some studios, dance studios, ballet recitals. Yeah. Something definitely. like that. Absolutely. Because I want to challenge it. I want to see what happens when there's like 20 little children yeah. running around on stage yeah. or something like that. Right. Frantic motion, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it performs really well. And I do think that that was, will it handle a mosh pit? <laughs> <laughs> Might go a little crazy, though. <laughs> you know, and that's the other thing, too, is I'd like to be like 100 feet away from it. Because 
the PTZ Optics cameras can track, the PTZ Optics 30S can track someone up to 300 feet away. That's crazy. Yeah. So I want to take this thing out to like a really big auditorium and try it. Right. Uh, parade. parade. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of stuff. I. These are really powerful, really cool cameras. Very excited for this technology um, to be now. And there's there's even more. We did a we did a uh, a show on it recently, but it's pretty cool. It's really really cool. So now, okay, so so we're supposed to stay focused on the the Super Joy. Thank you, Mike. Mike's bringing us back to the Super Joy. <laughs> We've got our Super Joy here. This is really is the most popular joystick for PDZ cameras. So congratulations to our engineering team for really thinking through what it takes to build something like this. And was it, you know, what is the key selling features? I mean, everything in here was thought out so nicely. There is a basic mode. So you can have it, you can see the the buttons. It just is going to allow you to use these buttons and nothing else. Uh, for volunteers, right? Yeah. I mean, if you don't know what you're doing, this is what you should be focused on. Don't touch the iris, the shutter speed, the white balance, you know, leave that be for the people who know how to use it. You're just stuck in basic mode. Uh, matrix mode is a really interesting feature. What this does is even, this is even easier than basic mode, in my opinion. It makes it so camera one has three presets, camera two has three presets, and camera three has three presets. So if you've just got like a two or three camera setup, you don't even have to switch cameras. You've got it all settled for you there. Wow. Um, there. This joystick also has an HDMI output, so that is super handy. Yeah. We use that all the time on our shoots, just to know, you know what camera are you connected to. What's the output looking like? <laughs> what are you doing with it? Uh, these knobs are really nice. These are zoom knobs and focus knobs. I play with these a little too much sometimes and get the cameras <laughs> out of focus, even when they're auto tracking. Um. There is also focus lock and unlock. And then there's an auto focus button. And you'd think, well, shouldn't the auto focus be on all the time? Well, you can click this button to do what we call a snap focus and automatically snap it back to be in focus if the auto focus is somehow um, locked onto the wrong thing, let's say. Um, what else is on here? Uh, we have these knobs right here can do multiple things. When you click the knob, you can cycle through the different functions that it has. So iris, shutter speed, gain, red balance, screen balance. Um, <coughs> and then, of course, these IP joysticks are really the, the full value of them are unlocked through the web interface. So they're powered over Ethernet. And once they're powered over Ethernet, we can connect to their IP address, which is shown on the top here, and we can go into the web interface to do even more. Does the web interface work on a Mac from Timothy? Yes, it will. Uh, the web interface will work with any web browser. So it will work for a Mac. Don't worry, we love Mac users out there. Uh, we have all of our, mo almost all of our apps, including the CMP mm -hmm. software, all work for Windows and Mac and Linux. So for those yeah. Linux users out there too. <laughs> um, with this web interface here, I just want to show the custom button area. Uh, there's a lot of cool areas to this joystick area. Uh, but one, actually, before I go to the custom button area, I just want to show, you can actually search your entire network and it will show all NDI sources. So... That's really cool, not just because it makes adding cameras super easy, right? Any NDI camera, this PTZ, this will work with. But also, there's a tool called the NDI Bridge, mm -hmm. and that bridges multiple networks together. So this allows you to control cameras that might not even be on your local area network, but on another local area network somewhere else in the world. That's an idea. And that's it, just the super joy? Well, yes, it is actually just the SuperJoy because the SuperJoy supports NDI. Right. Uh, it can search the network for those NDI sources. So if you have a PT Joy G4, that's like the perfect opportunity. You have all these NDI devices. You want that easeability, that instant connection. SuperJoy is perfect for that. Yep. 
So that's where this comes in. And you can just quickly add those. You know, so it also removes the need to know the IP address or, you know, it just makes things easier. Yeah. How many times have I heard, what's the IP address for that? Yes. Can you read that out for us? <laughs> We're constantly doing that. <laughs> now, this tab here is the custom button tab. And the custom buttons allow you to send HTTP triggers, UART, TCP, UDP, and then, of course, super presets that we talked about. Now, I'll take a moment to explain super presets. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I got a great tutorial from Matt Davis, the engineer who designed the SuperJoy, who wanted to share how to do um, pan tilt limits with the SuperJoy. Excellent. Which is a great example of how flexible this product really has become. So, but I just want to show super presets first. I think some of our the folks in the audience know about this already. But what you can do is say, all right, let's let's count this test. See how many there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ten. Nine. Eight. Nine. There's eight. And then this is a special one. The one at the Ooh. bottom is an HTTP trigger. Okay. So what this allows you to do is you can move eight cameras with one click plus send an HTTP command, meaning you could say, I want all eight cameras to move to scene left, plus I'm going to send a command to my lighting system to turn the lights blue. Wow. Um, so this is really powerful. You could make sure you could change the source in your vMix software or OBS. So this is what a super preset is. I have an example of this I want to show here, which is uh, essentially stage left. Oh, I got to zoom out. Sorry. Uh, stage left, center, stage right. These different custom buttons can have the same four cameras, but four different scenes with those four cameras. Okay. It's a little complicated, but it's yeah. super powerful. Once you start using a PTZ camera, you start using a joystick, you realize that there's, if you automate all of this, you can do so much more with the software, with your time, ma managing the chat. Yeah. You know, all these different things. It's a full management system, really. And it's a full blown switcher once you start automating these presets into it. Yeah. Um, and James is even saying you could use the HTTP to activate a mute group. So there's so much you can do. In fact, one feature that I wanted to add, there's some new features that have been added. One of them is automatic triggers. So you can say every time I switch to camera one on the joystick, I also want my TriCaster or my vMix or my OBS to switch to camera one. Right. Right. So you could like automate not just your joystick, but your video switcher. Yeah. Um, and I think you added some, some cool slides here. I wanted to just show. Um, there's another uh, new feature for the SuperJoy, and this is uh, also available for the PT Joy G4. There's a current cam variable. This is new. Uh, and this is nice because. When you are entering HTTP commands into your joystick, they used to have to be hard coded, meaning the IP address of the camera that you are sending that command to had to be entered into the custom button. But with the current cam variable, now it can, it'll just it'll, the IP address will always be whatever camera you're on, hmm. and that allows you to use the same custom buttons with every single camera as opposed to just having them be statically just one. So these are the types of things that our engineers are constantly building in. Another big feature is the ability to toggle these buttons. So on the SuperJoy, we've got four buttons to add custom commands to, but each one can have an on-off command. So you can have, each button can have two commands. So start, stop, start and stop tracking are two different commands, but they can be the same button. Um, just as an example, Panasonic cameras were added as supported for both the SuperJoy and the PT Joy. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a big deal. A lot of our customers like that. Yeah. Uh, we talked about the automatically discovering NDI cameras. Um, and it's just part of an NDI. If you're using NDI, it's part of the NDI ecosystem. Uh, having NDI cameras, maybe you have an NDI video switcher or yeah. an encoder. Uh, we looked at the HDMI output. Um, that is a big feature. And those are just a few things we wanted to highlight. Um, now, getting to the most complicated part of this show. <laughs> Can I do it? Actually, I'm not going I'm to. Sure you... Because it's so complicated, I'm just going to explain it. Okay. So essentially, what you can do 
with the super joy. And I did, I did actually set this up. I just, I'm not going to do a live demo of it. I'm going to walk you guys through this. Okay. But the super joy is so flexible that you can do a lot of things. And one of the things our customers have been asking about is they want to auto track, but they want to set limits on the left and right, which we demoed today. Yes. Right. Um, so you can do something pretty cool with the super joy. You can, I'm gonna to, it's going to be technical, but I'm going to explain this. Okay. Here we go. I better settle in here. All right. So but you can use one button to turn on and off auto tracking. That's right. been around for a while, right? You can do that. But you can do almost anything with this super joy. And so this button right here, if I click it, it's going to start auto tracking. So that camera is now tracking. I think it might be tracking you. It might be tracking John. I don't know who it's tracking. But I click the button again, and it stops tracking because that's what that button does. On, off, toggle. Easy you enough. still got three other buttons here. Now, one of the cool things that you can do is you can set a button to enable pan tilt limits. And then you can have another button set to clear those limits. So you could literally be like, hey, set the limits. I don't want that camera leaving the stage. I want it to track the people on stage. Maybe I want it to frame the people on stage, but I do not want it to leave the stage, so I put the limits on. But then, who knows? Maybe the president wants to kiss a baby. You know, I don't know what the reason why. <laughs> they're jumping off stage, and they're exceeding the limits that you've set. But you're like, oh, man, this president wants to kiss this baby right now. So you clear the limits, and boom, the camera can auto-track. The limits are gone. Now... Wow. How do you do that? Well, if we go back to my, um, yep, thank you, Mike. Go back over here. There is actually a hex command. It's in our documentation for setting pan tilt limits and clearing pan tilt limits. It looks like this. Um, no one in their right mind is going to memorize that. So clearly we have that in our documentation on how to do that. But this is something that is pretty cool. You can set the pan tilt zoom limits. And I just want to show here, how would you know, oh, sorry, just give me one second here. I, how would you know um, what pan tilt limits you want to put into a hex code like that? Well, the way it works is that there is something called the camera management software. Let's see if I can pull this up. We got a lot of tabs here. Um, there's a software called the Camera Management Platform. It's totally free. It's called, it is the PTZ Optics CMP. And this software here, if I go ahead and start it up, and Mike, I've got it on my screen here now. Sorry, it took me a second. And I add a camera to it. I can go ahead and pull up a, oh, you know what, Mike? I need to just refresh this. This is what the problem is. Sorry, I see what you're trying to do here. Okay, got it. Um, if I pull up the CMP here, I can add a camera. Let's just say I add this camera just for the heck of it. Um, one of the things that we'll notice here is that when we do PTZ control, at I have to zoom into this because it's so small, but this is, this is a really small little tech tip if this is something you're interested in doing. You can go into the pan tilt wow. variables here. So... Uh, basically, as I pan, you see those numbers changing? Yeah. That's the absolute position of the pan. The exact location. And the exact limit of the, the coordinates. Tilt. Now, what I'll do here, just to show you this, there's this tool called the PT Helper. And what it does, and I have to zoom into this because it's so small uh, so that you guys can see this. But what it does is it says, hey, move the camera to the upper right corner of where you intend to set your boundary zone. And then you move it to the top right and you move it to the bottom left and that's how you set the pan tilt limits. That's how you do it with the, with the CMP. If you want to set it up with the SuperJoy, what you would do is you would take those values of the pan and tilt limits and you would plug those into a custom button into the SuperJoy using the PTZ Optics documentation provided and then you can set the pan tilt limits and clear them with the PTZ Optics SuperJoy on the fly, as needed. We think that's pretty cool. Wow. It's super advanced. If you, do, if you are doing that, hit us up. Let us know because 
that would be probably one of the most advanced things you can do with the Superjoy if you are on the fly, turning on and off auto tracking, setting limits, and then clearing them. You are the Superjoy master. <laughs> <laughs> if you do that, please hit you us win. up. You win. You have won the Superjoy game if you do that. I hope you do that. Uh, we all want you to do that. If you can, if you do that, hit us up because I did it. <laughs> I did it today. I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. Yeah, that was sweet. So there you go. So you can always do that easily within the CMP. If you want to then pre-program it with the super joy, then it's an easy, easy toggle, toggle on and off. So you can kind of easily adjust that on the fly. Yeah, because I think if you do it in the CMP, it's a little bit, uh, it's not as like click a button done. Easy. You yeah. got to kind of go through this process. So it's not good for live. Yeah, okay. exactly. If you're live and you need to be able to let that president kiss the baby because he's jumping off stage <laughs> and you're like, whoa, I like my limits because, you know, because the whole thing with auto tracking is it's automated. Mm -hmm. So you're like, I'm not doing anything. I need to give this thing some parameters so that it doesn't go into, you know, sometimes there's sensitive areas. Right. Yeah. It's like, what if like it starts tracking the guy backstage and then zooming in and yeah he's kissing someone who's not his wife no, i'm just yeah. kidding i don't know <laughs> but i mean bathrooms at live shows conventions yeah, i mean there's sensitive areas. any shot that wanders there you could have your whole stream oh my gosh down. courtrooms yeah you're never Absolutely. supposed to show the jury mm -hmm. so there's plenty of scenarios where you don't want the camera to go but it's automated it's auto tracking what am i going to do set the pan tilt Paul, is that something you can do in each of these joysticks? Or is that something that like only the Super Joy can do? I'm going to say it's only the Super Joy because you can turn on and off auto tracking with the PT Joy G4, mm -hmm. but the PT Joy G4 doesn't have enough buttons to do the additional setting and sure. clearing of the um, mm -hmm. tilt limits. So you can change the limits in the CMP for your certain cameras which then the joysticks will follow because the cameras are limited to that distance. Yes. But the joysticks themselves can't set it like the Super Joy can, right? Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah, so that uh, takes us to Q&A because that was something that I think I explained properly. And it was a little complicated, but... You did a good job, If Ron you guys Bray. followed, if you, have, if you have questions, now's the time to now ask. <laughs> Ron Braid says, I'm setting a bookmark for this video. Lots of impressive ideas previously unknown. Oh, that's So awesome. we've done some good today. Great to hear that. We can hang on for a minute here, see if any questions Yeah, let us through, know which rows you're given to which joystick. Which joystick gets the rows today. Yes, I have exactly. a guess of who it's going to be, of which one it's going to be. But let us know in the chat which joystick gets the rows and any questions that you may have on this lovely Valentine's Day. Oh, uh, How's that smell? Plasticky. <laughs> <laughs> there were a couple extra uh, features that I just small ones that I missed. Um, with the with as I said, you know, PTZ Optics is committed to continually approving these products, and so we have like a long list. And so some of them are a little goofy, but the Superjoy does have five custom buttons, mm -hmm. so you can do, and they toggle. So you can do like on off is one button for auto tracking, clear presets is one. So you got five. But they also added virtual custom buttons, and those are available in the web UI. Mm -hmm. So you can actually add, I might be wrong with this, but I think you can add unlimited, but I know you, you can add a lot more additional if you want them, but they're virtual. Um, it all, we also added support for web sockets, and that's more of a feature for our developers. We've got a really cool developer portal on ptzoptics.com where developers can develop their own solutions. What that does though, and I know a lot of our partners who are working in the cloud, cloud-based video production, cloud solutions, WebSockets allow this, and I, I don't know for sure, I think it's only for the SuperJoy, but uh, it might be for the PTJoy as well, allows you to interact with the SuperJoy directly to a web browser. So uh, those are the, just a couple other things. Question from James. First of all, he says that the shot of Michael reminds him of the shot of the unseen banker in Deal or No Deal. Uh, <laughs> I love that. Because he's like a silhouette in there. Yeah. Give um, us the number, Michael. Give us the number. We have one new tech PTZ3 UHD. Do you know if the hex will work with that? Okay. He's talking about the hex for uh, setting and clearing pan tilt limits. Uh, that specific hex that I 
gave you will not because that one is designed for PTZ Optics. But um, essentially, the nice thing about what what we have done here with our SuperJoy is we are giving you the ability to send an HTTP command, which is very common, UART, TCP, UDP. So there's a lot of different ways to send these commands. TCP is very common. What that is, is TCP is essentially a connection. I don't even remember what TCP stands for, to be honest. I, I'd have to look that up, but I should know that. It's kind, of my, it's kind of my job to know that. I, I'm going to have to Google it real quick. Transmission control protocol. Okay, transmission control protocol. And it's generally what happens with TCP is you have an IP address and you have a port. So the IP address of the camera for this scenario was 61. And then the port for PTZ Optics is generally 5678. That's the port in which traffic flows through for control. So with the new tech camera, um, my guess is that you know it definitely has an IP address. It might not be the exact same port. But it definitely accepts commands. They might not be the exact command that I just showed you, which is look at this long string. And I will tell you that we are going to post a blog post about how to do it for PTZ Optics cameras because we know that data. We have that written. Uh, but essentially what this command is, uh, a transaction, transmission control protocol. Uh, this hex code, what it says is the hex code is, is specific to setting a pan tilt limit, but some of these characters, okay, are those absolute limit numbers right. that we were showing earlier. Sure. So it's like a hex code that's specifically telling it, don't go any higher than this, don't go any further than that, in the hex code. Um, so it is a little complicated. We're going to have a blog post about it on our page. The documentation for new tech, I would hope, has this information. But again, the, the moral of the story here is that we're giving you a lot of different ways to send commands. One of these will probably work. But there's no promises with other cameras. This is a really technical thing. Yeah, I can't promise you that it will work with a camera brand that we're unfamiliar with. Not that we're super unfamiliar with new tech. I know that camera. In fact, we have one. And if you're using a SuperJoy, guess what? You can call our support and they will help you. Yeah. Um, so our our team is not just, I don't want to give the wrong impression that our team will only help with our cameras. Our support team will help with other cameras as long as you have a PTZ Optics product of some kind, like our joystick. It, we do support people with Panasonic, people with other cameras. We will support you. With the joystick. Yeah. Yes. Not on its own, of course. And that's the magic, though. It's so customizable. It can work with any camera. You can customize it to do HTTP commands and really do whatever you'd like with your camera. If you have some special feature that your camera has, you can program that in the SuperJoy, mm -hmm. even though it's not a PTZ Optics camera. Yeah, that, it's, just, it's, just, it's standards based, as I mentioned, right? So like, it's like everyone is pretty much using these Sony standards. Mm -hmm. So uh, the documentation is actually fairly similar across camera brands with Sony being the most popular. Is there such a thing as NDI triggers? Okay, that's a good question. So, yes, I will say. I will say yes. And if, if this is what you mean. Um, NDI is a video production protocol. NDI has a lot of different things in the transmission, okay? So NDI has video, obviously, right? That's the core value of it. But it also has PTZ control. It also has tally, meaning mm. it can, it will, it knows if it's connected to a video production software, it knows whether it's not live, in preview, or live. The camera I'm looking at now is live. So I see a little red light on the top of it. And that is coming through NDI. Um, and then it, NDI also has metadata. So NDI has data about. The source. Is it a PTZ camera? What's the name of the PTZ camera? What is the IP address? What is the multicast address? Is it available to the public? So for example, a lot of people don't realize when they have a bunch of NDI sources on their network, if a kid walks in with a laptop to their network and knows how to use NDI tools, they can go and view all of your cameras and control them pretty easily. But if you properly set up your NDI system with domain manager and you manage access to those NDI sources, 
even if a kid comes with to your network at your school or your church or whatever and plugs in a computer with via Wi-Fi or whatever, they won't be able to see your NDI sources because you've properly managed the domain manager, which is in the metadata of the NDI. Now, getting to your question after I have filled in the <laughs> background for this, PTZ Optics Superjoy has triggers. So if we go to the triggers, which is brand new, by the way, um, and I do think it has a lot of value, and I think think it is similar to what you're asking for. Um, if you go to one of these cameras, okay, uh, we have a button here called custom. And this is what we call, oh, sorry. Wasn't this supposed to have triggers? Let me check, take a look at, maybe it's called triggers, but it actually is discussed as custom. Okay, that's what it is. So we call it a trigger. Because essentially what this is, is a custom button. Okay, now I'm really, I'm, this is going to be a really technical show, yeah. but I think that our audience is very technical. They're going to follow along with this. But I just dropped this hint of something, so I need to step backwards. <laughs> this is a complicated question. Okay, do you remember when I said, hey, the Superjoy now supports virtual custom buttons? Yes. I mentioned it like kind of as an offhand remark, uh, but now I realize that is how the triggers work. So let me just tie this full, full, full circle, circle here. So if you add a custom button, which I'm doing here on the screen right here, I'm going to show this closer. I like to show things close. Um, if I add a custom button, why would I want to add all these custom buttons? Well, you can add additional custom buttons. And once you add this custom button, you can set it up so that when you switch to that video source, it will trigger that custom button. So it really, it could be an, so it's kind of an NDI trigger to get to the original question. <laughs> uh, you can set it up. So, okay, here's that custom button. It's save. Every time you switch to that, it's going to call whatever you set up that custom button to do, meaning you can have an NDI camera with a trigger. So a little tricky, but you can get there. Yeah, I don't know if that's really what he wanted, but by explaining it, we actually kind of went a little bit of a deep dive there on yeah. some features on the Superjoy. I think that so, wraps it up. You can see that our engineers are putting a lot of functionality into this. It's very flexible and open, but also I'm telling you, I'll guarantee you this, if you have a question, if you submit a feature, it gets to our engineers and it gets done. And a lot of these things are from someone who needed this feature. And so I'll give you one. I want to just drop one that I know about that's coming. Uh oh. That's going to get me in trouble. <laughs> but last show. Oh, Mike's giving me the note. I'll do it. <laughs> well, I'm going to do it anyway, Mike. Because I'm I like getting in trouble. No, I don't. But you do a little bit. I I don't know why I do. It's like it's like it's the put some hearts on the on the screen so I can at least make myself feel better about this. <laughs> no, but but seriously, uh, last show, what was everyone asking for, Tess? What was the big request when we were showing all of the auto tracking? What was everyone saying? Oh, what? I don't remember. I wrote it down because I was doing my job. Oh, <laughs> okay. I'm joking. I'm just giving you a little zinger. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, he loves to when I me. say it, you'll remember it. Yes. You will. I um, everyone was asking about the headroom. Oh, darn it. They were like, they were. They were like, it's auto tracking great, but there's a bit too much headroom. Yes. Okay. They were asking to adjust the headroom. And then I was setting up. <laughs> Mike's going to mute me. <laughs> that would actually, Mike would be doing his job if he did that, <laughs> um, protecting the secret information. Okay. So I was setting up Superjoy today and it hit me. I was like, you know what? If you want to get rid of some of that headroom, set up a tilt limit. Yeah. And, and I went to the engineers and I was like, hey, you know, you guys know that the customers are requesting to get rid of the headroom. Should we use a pan tilt limit to do that? And they said, oh, no, no, no. We already figured out the headroom thing. That'll be in the next firmware. Oh. Mm. Ooh. Interesting. I hope I don't get upset about that. There's no promises on that. But I just want to say that we definitely are working on it. And I believe that it will be included in the next firmware. I'm not promised anything. I think that's my out for being in trouble. 
Well, don't the, hold me to the it. The limits but. could work as like a temporary solution, but yeah. it's it's the level of depth, right? If you're walking towards the camera, that tilt limit you could set is going to be completely different than when you were on a stage, yeah. right? Yeah. So if you know like the depth of how deep and close they're going to get to the camera, it could you, work. You, it could work, but yeah, if you're moving closer and farther away, then that's not going to really work exactly. Well, and right? that reminds me of a feature that of a very little known feature of our cameras that's very powerful though is there is a autofocus range control. Mm. It's been in the cameras for a while. We have not used it or demoed it on the show, so it's something that we should do. What it does is it allows you to say, hey, I want autofocus on, but I only want it to operate from within 20 feet of the camera and 30 feet of the camera. So do not focus on anything beyond 30 feet or anything before 20 feet. Sure. So the nice thing about that is if there's a crowd, you could say, look, don't ever focus on anything that's any closer than 60 feet. You know, right. so the autofocus can be on and it can do its job moving between different things. Or the great thing about that is if you're auto tracking, things moving. So that way, you know, you can set limits on where the auto tracking should happen and how the autofocus should operate. Yeah. So these are things that we need to dig more into right. to show our customers and we need to get out in the world and go to an auditorium or a stage or somewhere where it would really make sense. Because mm -hmm. this state, we have a stage here, but it's, it's not the biggest stage in it's the world. It's not the largest room. So. So anyway. That would be great. I okay. think that about wraps it up. Yeah. Thank you for letting me ramble on that one. I went, I went on some deep holes there. Yeah. Yeah, no, fun. it was great. Thank you guys so much. If you haven't liked and subscribed yet, please like and subscribe so we can continue bringing content like this to you, especially on this Valentine's Day. Show us some love. We really would appreciate <laughs> it. And I think we agreed that the Super Joy takes oh, the, the final Oh, the Super Joy road. takes the, the road. The chat has spoken. Did they? Okay. Between that and the PT Joy was. Oh, the PT Joy. You know, the PT Joy is really a workhorse. It, it deserves some love. It's the working man of the joystick world. You can see the evolution, right? You know, you get some customizable <laughs> buttons. You get up to the PT Joy. You're getting more. You're getting a bigger screen. Then you get to the mm -hmm. Super Joy. It's like the evolution of man and joysticks, <laughs> right? Slowly growing, getting smarter, more customizable. I really want to say, though, that subscribe for sure because there is more to come in the PTZ camera world, uh, for, from a, especially from controls perspective. This is what we do. That's why we are so good at it. Because all we really do is PTC cameras and controllers and, you know, mounts and software and support of that. Um, so that's why we really are ahead uh, in this industry, because it's all the focus that our R&D goes into. It's all the support that our team needs to support. They're not supporting, you know, I'm trying to think of something that's different. Like they're not supporting teleprompters or something. Right. It's just PTC cameras. So we know it inside and out and we do a good job. If there was a sweet spot in camera zoom abilities, would it be 20x or the 30x that would hit the sweet spot to cover the most of all situations? Definitely the 30. Because the reason why that is is very simple. Um, the 20x and the 30x have the same field of view. With that being said, the 12x has a wider field of view. And literally, I'm not going to drop customer names or anything. But they're being used for reality TV shows. They're being used for, honestly, this room right here that we're in would probably be fine with all 12X. Mm -hmm. sure. It's a 20 by 30 room. We've got 30Xs in here because we want to show the, what it can do. Right. Sure. But if you're in a small space, let's call it 20 by 20, 20 by 30 or smaller, the 12Xs, they have a wider field of view so you can get closer to them. The wider the field of view, the wider the lens, the more light that can get in. So the, the bigger trade-off is the 20 and the 30 is more of a price difference than an, than an optical zoom, an optical zoom situation because then the 12X versus, and look at the size difference too though, right yeah, there. Yeah, you can see. <laughs> Pretty big size difference. Baby and daddy, yeah. <laughs> oh, look, it even lit up there. So look, it lit up like, it's like, I want to win the rose. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's getting good. It's alive. Good job, Mike. Mike is really coming into to, to his uh, 
to the <laughs> what what they call flow, the flow state. <laughs> flow state. The switch state, yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you at Worship Summit Live at the end of the month on March 28th. If you haven't registered for that, I'll put that in the chat now. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate you. Thank you. Enjoy your Valentine's Day. Yes, happy Valentine's Day.